chest up, shoulders back. This is Revival Fitness. A question I get asked very, very frequently, how many pounds a week should I gain? And from what I gather, it seems like roughly one pound a week being gained is a good ballpark figure or general consensus. And that is wrong. No, no. So let's go into how a lot of guys will do their first bulk and why it fails spectacularly. Like many dudes that get into the online fitness space, of course you're going to run into the most popular channels right off the bat because that's what the algorithm feeds you. So you're going to be operating under the paradigm of the perma lean dream. You think that you're going to be able to get abs and get big and strong at the same time, do it in an extremely unrealistic time frame, especially, or maybe you could just gradually itch up the scale a bit, but the mainstream message you're going to see over and over is that bulking, even if they admit that it works, they're going to say, oh, well, you're going to just gain a lot of fat and you're going to lose all of the strength and size anyway, whenever you cut down, because that's how bulking goes for most dudes. This never goes away precisely for this reason because guys will be too lean and you know, they might be making some physical changes like I was back in the day, right? Like you can grow some muscle, you can get a little bit of gains, right? Just based on the fact that you're a novice, you can get a little bit of arm and shoulder going, but realistically, you're not making any real level of progress. Your strength is going to be very stagnant, especially on the upper body exercises that guys are always obsessing about. So you do that for however long you do it, it's usually going to be at least a number of months. So you've been moving along at the pace of a tortoise for a while now, and then you finally are going to be struck with reality, and it's time to eat more. Then what a lot of guys do, I call it the desperation dirty bulk. They are going to try to make up for all of that lost time, and especially the longer that you have been spinning your own wheels, the worse that this desperation dirty bulk is going to be. And mentally it sounds good because you're like, okay, well, if I bulk now, because I know the bulking builds more muscle, I'm going to just pack on all this size that I couldn't before. You're going to convince yourself that you can make gains at a rate that you simply cannot do. Even with the added food, it's just not going to happen. And it's fun for a little bit, right? You're like, screw it, man, no more tracking, all this other stuff, I'm gonna go crazy. And your strength is going up, so everything on paper is pretty good. Until eventually, you look down or look in the mirror and it's like, okay, uh, I'm a little unhappy with what's happening here, right? I mean, you're gaining a decent amount of fat. Now, granted, I have to make this distinction too because a lot of guys, given the body dysmorphia rampant in this space, they think that they're fat and they're not. Some guys, you actually will get to the point where you're like pushing 20% plus body fat. What I see very often is that guys will gain 30 to 40, maybe even 50 pounds or so in the span of a handful of months. If you gain 30 pounds over five months, that means you're averaging six pounds a month. Even if you're a beginner, guys, you are not going to put on six pounds of muscle in a month. The genetically gifted could probably gain two pounds of muscle a month in their novice phase. The average guy, I'd say it's gonna be closer to one to maybe one and a quarter, possibly 1.5 pounds of muscle a month. Again, we're just ballparking here, guys. But if you can gain even 16 pounds of muscle in one year as a beginner, that is a lot. I mean, your body is going to look drastically different at the end of that. Your metabolism is going to be noticeably different, all this good stuff. But let's use the five month example and let's say that you just gained 30 pounds. So let's split the difference and say you gain 1.25 pounds of muscle per month. 1.25 times five is going to come out to what? I think about six or so. So you're gonna gain about six pounds of muscle in the span of five months. This means that of those 30 pounds, 24 of those are fat. That is a pretty lopsided ratio. Think about how much muscle you're gaining in proportion to how much fat that you're gaining. That's what you need to think about when you're bulking, guys. In addition to the thing we're gonna talk about in a second, gaining all of this weight quickly, guys, is the fast track to gaining more fat than you're comfortable with. And some of you, I know you don't care about this. You're in this for the bloat maxing. You wanna get as big and strong as possible, get all the leverages, that's fine. Most guys are not gonna be able to handle that though. Most dudes, mentally, you get to that point of 20%-ish body fat, they're gonna to start to panic. And you don't need to really panic, but it's just not gonna be a point where you're gonna get, I don't think, much more return from the bulking than if you pretty much end it relatively at that area. And that's the beauty of it too, because a lot of guys after they do the desperation dirty bulk and they gain a lot of fat quickly, 
then they're going to go back into an extreme cut to try to trim all the fat off quickly, and that's how you end up yo-yo dieting. Once again, guys, it's not bulking and cutting being bad. It's because people do these things in an extreme fashion. They do them as a compensation for the other. So if you use the typical one pound a week thing that I see so often, if you bulk for five months, and let's just say that each month has five weeks in it just for the ease of the math, you're gonna gain 25 pounds. So let's even use the prior example. You gained six pounds of muscle in that time. You could even up it. Let's say that you are pretty darn good at this. You gain eight pounds of muscle. That's better, but ultimately, I mean, it's still probably a little bit more than you would have to do. So I've said before, you wanna have the muscle to fat gain ratio be as close to one to one as possible. So I know from my vantage point, guys, a lot of you are not going to have this problem like I do in terms of I had to stuff my face to just see the scale go up a little bit. Whatever your circumstances though, you want the scale to be gradually climbing, but focusing on the scale is not what you need to do. So the first big bulk you guys saw me do on YouTube, I started out at about 167 pounds. At the end, I was 190 pounds. Based on the rate that a lot of you guys bulk, that's a gain of 23 pounds. Some of you guys do that in three, four, five months. That took me 18 months. And you can see the pictures on the screen here. This was as so-called fat as I got by the end of it. You put me in a normal tank top or a t-shirt, I had no semblance of a belly, right? This is possible because I did not rush the process. In the most recent bulk, I started in fall of 2022. I took a two month break because I had to cut and go carnivore for a lot of skin problems I was having. I gained 10 total pounds and that was pretty much the span of just over a year again. So in neither scenario, guys, was the scale climbing rapidly for me at all. Guys are focused on the wrong thing. This scale obsession is ridiculous, okay? Unless you have a specific weight class that you need to get to for a competition, and even then you're going to be checking the scale more so toward the end of that, you do not need to be obsessing over the scale this much, man. Dude, I cannot believe the fact that some of you weigh yourselves every single day. That blows my mind, dude. I talk to guys all the time, they're like, yeah, I weigh myself every morning. I'm like, are you nuts? The scale is going to fluctuate so much for so many reasons. It does not give you any information about your body composition, how much stronger you're getting, you ate certain foods that you reacted to badly, you drank more water, you went to the bathroom more or less. I mean, dude, there's so much stuff that goes into that single number that you see on the scale. So don't obsess over the number on the scale. Obsess over the numbers in your logbook. But that's where guys get hung up because they're like, well, how do I know that I'm gaining enough muscle mass if I don't check the scale so much? And this goes into something I've been telling you guys for a while now, right? I train for hypertrophy, not strength. Okay, bro. What you should be saying is you train for hypertrophy, not maximum strength. You know, you gotta make that discrepancy because you need to get stronger to get bigger. You guys have gotta get out of this mentality where it's like, oh, well, strength is only for one rep maxing on the bench squat and deadlift and powerlifting and stuff. It's like, no, bro, strength is strength. There is no set rule that says strength has to be confined to just the power lifts or low reps or anything like that. If you get stronger on a set of 10 on any exercise, you got stronger you progressively overloaded, right? I mean, that's what this all comes down to. So if you are getting stronger, and if you're in a bulking phase, I think you should be getting stronger on basically every single exercise. It's gonna vary based on which it is, right? Typically the bigger lower body movements, they're gonna progress the easiest. Smaller isolation stuff is typically gonna be the slowest, but the proof is in the pudding. If you are getting stronger reliably on all these exercises over an extended period of time, you're good to go. And that's a whole nother, discussion just a quick side note you guys need to bulk for a while okay this is not something that you're going to be able to just oh, i'm going to pack on a bunch of size in three months no man the vast majority of you guys if you're in the position to bulk right now you're probably going to have to bulk for at least a year it might even have to be longer than that i mean it takes time to build all this muscle tissue guys so then the million dollar question how do you know how much extra you should be eating? And some of you that are bulking right now, you could keep the food possibly in the same spot or maybe even reduce it if you're pushing it a little bit too quickly. Find the amount of food, the surplus amount, as much as you can estimate, that allows you to fit those criteria where your energy's good, you're able to hit PRs on a consistent basis, even if it's something as simple as adding reps, you're noticeably getting stronger each time you go in the gym week after week, month after month. The amount of food that is going to get you to that point is going to vary. I've said it usually for a lot of people, plus 200 
is going to be the good starting point. But I don't think most guys are going to have to go beyond five to 600 extra. Extremely active dudes, especially if you are an athlete, maybe you have a very manual labor oriented job on your feet all the time. Those guys might have to push it very, very high. I'm talking like a thousand or so, but most of you are not going to fit that description. Whatever your circumstance is though, that's what you do. You need to find the amount of surplus to which you can just keep getting stronger. And some of you are gonna think, oh, that's too simple. It's really not, man. That's all this ultimately comes down to. You can argue that you would wanna keep your bulk as lean, even though I don't really like the term lean bulking because of the connotation, like you're gonna keep these ripped abs and just build nothing but muscle. That's not going to happen. But you wanna be able to keep the body fat gain as low as you possibly can while maximizing the output in the gym. That's basically the two axes that we have to work with. What amount of food for you allows you to maximize gym performance consistently over the long haul while keeping a relatively low amount of body fat. And that's also going to vary. Some guys, like I mentioned, are more comfortable with more body fat, they carry it better. Some of you have ab anxiety and you think you have to have visible abs in some form to exist as a person, you don't. Okay, so there's you know a lot of individuality and some stuff you might have to work out on your own here. And it's basically like finding a sweet spot. So for myself, I noticed that about plus 500 to 800, depending on how much I'm active outside of the gym, that allows me to meet these parameters. A lot of you are not gonna be able to eat that much. For a lot of you, if you ate the amount of surplus that I do, you would balloon up pretty darn quickly. So for you, it might be closer to 200 to 300 or 300 to 400. And keep in mind too, as your bulk goes on and on, you may have to raise the amount as your metabolism adjusts, as you build more muscle, Maybe you want to get some better leverages for things like bench press, hit some PRs. I get you. That's how I hit 315. I was leverage maxing toward the end pretty heavily there, just stuffing my face. That doesn't hurt for a little bit, but that's what you do. And then my rule is plus 200 once you have kind of hit a sticking point in terms of the progression in the gym. So once you have started to, you know, slow down a bit on a number of things and not just one bad week, you know, you miss some sleep or whatever, but I'm saying it's been like three, four weeks now. That's how I typically define a plateau, two plus weeks of not even being able to add a rep to a given exercise. Now you might have some pains and injuries, maybe you could rotate some things out, but if you're sticking with the same exercise, man, maybe even do a weight reset, plus 200 to the existing amount of food, and then go back at it. You're going to push past that plateau with the extra food but it's not so much extra food that you're going to lose your body composition. And I think that's about as succinctly as I can put it. So I'm sure you guys are gonna have a lot of questions. You can drop them down below. You can get in direct contact with me on Patreon and join our Discord if you have more questions, because I know, as I mentioned, a lot of the individual aspects of this, they can be kind of confusing. But let me know down below if this makes sense. But this is how you guys need to spin it, man. Stop obsessing over the scale, obsess over your logbook. That's where the money is made. That's where the muscle is grown. That's where the changes really happen, man. It's the weights in the gym. It's not what the number on the scale says. But that's been it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. As I mentioned, get in contact with me down below. Also, be sure to grab your program to have something in the gym you know is going to reliably work to build size and strength at the same time. You can use my links below to save money on some other great products and services, too. And I will catch you guys next time.